Hi everyone, welcome to another Doug's Lab video. In this video, I'll be performing a one molar scale synthesis of isopropyl nitrite using the action of nitrous acid on isopropanol. I'll be making the nitrous acid using another acid, in this case hydrochloric acid, and its action on a nitrite salt, in, in my case, sodium nitrite. Isopropyl nitrite is a potent vasodilator. It's also absorbed through the skin as well as the lungs, and it has a low boiling point, so it's easy to accidentally expose yourself to this. This procedure is ideally carried out in a fume hood, and at the very least, outside or in a very well-ventilated room. Here are the prepared reactants, including 121 grams of 30% hydrochloric acid, 86 grams of 70% isopropyl alcohol, and 69 grams of technical grade sodium nitrite. Since this reaction needs to happen at cold temperatures, we need to prepare two solutions, which we can then chill down and then mix together. The first solution is going to be the hydrochloric acid, and that needs no additional work. The second solution, however, is going to be the isopropyl alcohol and the sodium nitrite. So it's poured into a beaker, and stirring is started. And then the sodium nitrate is slowly added. We'll now transfer the hydrochloric acid to an addition funnel, uh, making sure the stopcock is first closed. Of course, that's a common mistake to make. The stopcock joints are well greased because this is going to go in the freezer and I don't want the HCL to be escaping into the freezer where it could damage a bunch of things that are in there. Okay, and the acid is now in the funnel and we can transfer this to the freezer until such time that it is cooled down. And you might have noticed that there was some water stuck to the sides at the inside of the funnel. Uh, water will not affect this reaction very much, so it's okay to use things like 30% HCl and 70% isopropanol because, like I said, that excess water isn't really going to affect the reaction. While the reactants are in the freezer, a concentrated solution of sodium chloride is prepared, which will be used to wash and dry the isopropyl nitrate product later. So I've set up the reactants out of the freezer. I've removed the stopper, or at least engaged the vent at the top of the addition funnel to allow me to equalize the pressure so I can add the HCl without pressure problems. I will add it to a rapidly stirred beaker here of the alcohol and nitrite, and we should end up with isopropyl nitrite. Um, if the reaction starts getting a little warm, we will have to put this in an ice bath so that we don't start boiling the nitrite or decomposing it to any great extent. Isopropyl nitrite happens to be fairly resistant to thermal decomposition uh, in comparison to other nitrites anyway, and so this isn't typically a problem, but this is a large scale, and so we should pay attention to that temperature despite having maybe success on a test tube scale. So let's continue, or let's start to add, I guess. Very slow drips. So what's happening is the sodium nitrite is reacting with the acid to form nitrous acid, which then attacks the alcohol and forms the nitrite with it. Once the isopropyl nitrite is out of the picture, the only thing that's left in solution is the chloride from the acid and the sodium from the sodium nitrite. So in theory, we'll have a solution containing only isopropyl nitrite and sodium chloride. 
As the reaction progresses, the solution begins to darken to a slightly straw yellow color. This is partly due to dissolved nitrogen oxides, and also because the color of isopropyl nitrite is a golden yellow straw color. You can see it's warmed considerably, there's no frost left on the beaker, and the contents have become a lot more mobile. All of the acid has been added, and the beaker has gone from ice cold to just barely warm. So clearly, pre-chilling the reagents and using the amount of water I did that was dissolved in both the HCl and the alcohol served to regulate the temperature of the reaction sufficiently to not need an external cooling bath. Now again, this is not the case with other nitrites, some other nitrites anyway, but for isopropyl nitrite you can get away with it. So I'm going to allow this to stir for another 5 or 10 minutes while I clean out some of this other labware that we're going to need in a few minutes. The solution has been stirred for about 5 minutes and then settled for 5 more minutes. And you can see we've got a nice straw colored oil floating on top of some solids in water. Now if I tap it you can see that there's bubbles coming up and that's because the isopropyl nitrite is decomposing. So we need to get this separated and washed as soon as possible. So I've added approximately 40 milliliters of water to this separatory funnel here, which will help dissolve some of these solids that are in here after I transfer it. We're going to try and decant the isopropyl nitrite layer off of as many of the solids as possible. And you can see I've poured most of it off. There's still a little bit on there, but I don't know if I'll be able to actually recover that amount without getting too many solids in there. And you can see here the solids go into the water and then they dissolve, yielding a clear layer. I think that's about all I can get out of this. We'll let it settle and see if I can get anything else, but I really doubt it. So in here should be sodium chloride, and that's a very saturated solution of sodium chloride. We'll now proceed to drain the aqueous layer from the bottom while retaining the nitrite layer on top. The nitrite is now washed with the saturated sodium chloride solution that we prepared earlier. You can tell it's saturated because of the existence of some sodium chloride crystals in the bottom. And I'll just swirl this to wash it. You have to be very careful because isopropyl nitrate has an extremely high vapor pressure and it's very easy to overpressurize a container by just getting some on the walls. That should do it. Our primary impurity here is also sodium, is already sodium chloride and just a little bit of water. So I really assume that this uh, nitrite is already quite pure. And again, after separation, we'll drain the aqueous layer. Wasting a small amount of nitrite to purge the water from the stem of the addition funnel is a good idea to remove the water from getting in the container that you're going to store it in. And here I have a two ounce container which may not hold all of it, but that's okay because we'll use the rest for an experiment. And there we have it, one brand new bottle of isopropyl nitrite. It's a very good solvent.
Isopropyl nitrite, even though it decomposes easily, has excellent solvent properties. We'll use this watch glass to demonstrate this. I have here a syringe full of vacuum grease. This is the type of grease, it's highly fluorinated grease that I use for all the ground glass joints that I have. And you'll notice that it's it's a rather clear, almost looks like petroleum jelly, but it's extremely thick. You can see my glove sticks to it very easily. So that's a mess, and that's difficult to clean up because there's not much that dissolves this stuff. And we can try that out now. So of course water won't. And even hot water won't because this grease is phase modified or phase stabilized to allow it to remain at the same viscosity over a very wide range of temperatures. So heat doesn't get it off. Water doesn't get it off either. We can try something like acetone in a wash bottle. And then you can see even spraying directly on it, we're not doing anything at all to it. We can even try the isopropyl alcohol that we had originally used for this experiment. Unfortunately, it's 91%. I do have 100%, but I really don't want to waste it on this. So we can try 91% isopropyl alcohol. Let's pour some on there. And once it dries, now you can see that didn't really do anything to it either. But what about isopropyl nitrite? So I've got a test tube with a little bit of isopropyl nitrite in it, and of course the slide contaminated with the uh, grease here. And we'll just pour this on. Pour it back off, and you can see we're starting to degrade that grease. You see how it's spread out now and the peaks aren't quite as high? And in fact, if you were to keep going, I really don't want to rub it with my gloves because I'm not sure if it's going to go through them or not, but you will actually get rid of all your joint grease using isopropyl nitrite. There are better solvents to use for this, but oh, there, now you can really see. It's sort of run all over the place. Another property of isopropyl nitrite is that it is extremely flammable. This reaction needs to be carried out far away from all flame and spark ignition sources. And you'll see what I mean here. I've got a little vessel of isopropyl nitrite here and a pipette. And I'll suck up a little bit and spread it on this hot plate. I'll then take my lighter and just bring it close. And you can see how far the vapors had traveled already. It burns with a nice luminous flame. Well, that's all I've got on isopropyl nitrite. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, like, and comment.